This is Capital One, Tournament Central. A look at what's happening around the country right now on TBS, Iona and Iowa State in a shootout there. CBS has Yale and Baylor. The Bulldogs still up by two in Hampton and Virginia happening right now on True TV from Raleigh, North Carolina. Coming up next here, it's the Austin P. Governors who had an unbelievable run just to make it into and out of the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament as champions. They'll take on the number one overall seed, the Jayhawks from Kansas in just a few minutes time. Welcome in Capital One Tournament Central, everybody. Matt Weiner here, Seth Davis, Wally Zerbiak, Coach Ron Hunter right there. We'll get you set for KU and Austin P. Let's go, P. Right? That's right. <laughs> flies uh, open. The, the flies <laughs> open. Let's go, P. Uh, the governor's uh, coming up in just a few minutes. You just saw the University of Connecticut beat Colorado. Very different halves in this game. Kevin Ollie and Tad Boyle getting to it. Xavier Talton, no, Josh Scott, 13 and four in the first half. Yeah, it was all Josh Scott inside, just manhandling the UConn defense, getting the ball where he wanted on the blocks, was showing the array with the jump shot, with the lefty finishes. But then in the second half, completely different story for UConn. Yeah, Colorado was up by nine at the half. It's a 22 point turnaround for UConn as they take a 13 point lead. I tell you what, I would have loved to have been in that quick halftime speech because it was very quick. He brought the team back out, and uh, I tell you what, they came out fired up, man. They were ready to go. Uh, sometimes as a coach, all you got to do is say three or four words. You don't need 15 minutes. Love to know what those three or four words were. Good man, so the guys were talking about how little time they spent in the locker room before getting right back out there. Look at the pressure. Look at the turnovers. Look at the athleticism. UConn getting out in transition, using their athletes. I love these actions. Purvis was a flamethrower. He got going in that second half, made some big shots. They took control of the game. A block here. Amita Brima with the block. Rodney Purvis to the rim and one on the other end. UConn up by 13, as I mentioned. Tell you what, they really struggled with this press, boy. Mm -hmm. They almost got him in trouble right there, got a steal. Uh, almost got Colorado a chance to win this game. Coach doesn't look real happy there, does he? No. This is the play of the day here. Look, Sterling Gibbs throws uh, the ball away, and then look at him go get the steal. Yeah. Incredible gut. What a scramble right here in the backcourt. Well, probably got away with a travel up there. I think Coach is trying to call us right in front of the bench there. Probably got away for a trial. And if he had called the travel, they get the ball on the side right. instead of the other turnover. So wow. interesting play there. Well, and eventually he was fouled, and that was UConn's best play all day long because they went 22 of 23 from the free throw line. What a luxury for a coach to have the best free throw shooting team in the country at tournament time. You can go through all the practices. You can do all the things you want. At the end of the day, they miss one free throw. And look what the other team missed, 11 free throws. Yep. That's a huge difference. And, again, you practice all the things, but that's what win and loses basketball games for you. Uh, so Colorado, or excuse me, UConn moves forward to play the winner of that Kansas Austin P game. Time for Capital One Venture Card double, double. Daniel Hamilton. Look at his last four games, four straight double doubles for Hamilton, and for UConn, that's the first time since 2009 they've had a player do that. Hamilton and his uh, and his running mate. Just eight points at the half and a big, big second half, but everybody really turned things around in the second half for UConn. And it started at the defensive end. I mean, you could tell if Kevin Ollie's going to get into his guys. You think about the type of NBA player that Kevin Ollie was. He was not a great shooter. He was not a great scorer. He was a great defensive player and a really tough individual. And he channeled his personality into this team in the second half. You're talking about Colorado is the best three-point shooting team in the Pac-12, and George King is the best three-point shooter inside the Pac-12. George King only had one made three. You, uh, Colorado was two for ten from behind the three-point line, and UConn, because of that perimeter pressure, did a great job taking out Josh Scott in the second half. I thought he was going to have a much more dominant game, and once that momentum turned, Colorado was powerless to stop it. Impressive win for the Huskies. Hamilton and Rodney Purvis, by the way, the other name I was looking for, they had 28 in the second half. I'd say, has Kevin Ollie lost a game in the NCAA tournament? Nope. 7-0. Nope. Nope. Wow, I'd tell you what, that's a pretty good start. 
<laughs> Pretty good percentage. <laughs> That's a really good start. Because I tell you what, he knows his team. And talk about going in at halftime. Sometimes you don't need to go X and O and all the other things. You know what motivates your team. And I thought he went in and he was upset. You can tell. I didn't like the body language we had talked about before of the UConn players. But wow, the second half, the entire bench standing up. Guys really got after it. You talk about running their sets. Their cuts were harder. Yeah. They really played with a purpose in the second half that they didn't open up the game with. And I think that's probably what he talked about. He just used probably some different words at halftime. Coach, yeah. earlier today you talked about how you wouldn't want any of your players to be on Twitter if you could help it. Yeah. Uh, but it's a reality. It's out there. And, and one of the absurd things about social media is that sometimes people tweet each other from four feet away, which is what <laughs> happened a few minutes ago when Wally tweeted to Seth. They were literally sitting on either side of me when this happened. It's only it Thursday. We're already not talking to each other. <laughs> We've spent way too much time together. <laughs> Talk to my agent. And Seth tweeted back. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. La 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 la. La 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 la. Look at these guys. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. My players right here, man. What's going on here? Watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at ncaacom March Madness or download the app today. This is a, a moment ago in the uh, Virginia game against Hampton. Look closely there and you watch head coach Tony Bennett kind of put his hands to his knees and go to the floor. He's received some Tony medical Bennett attention. They have taken him off the floor. Did he slip? And one of the assistants has taken over for Virginia. Virginia. Two, and Williams, and we'll keep you updated Carolina. when we find out exactly what happened. In that 116 game. Coach Tony Bennett. Looks like he remained conscious, but. Wow. First game of the day, Duke. UNC Wilmington. Kevin Keats, Seahawks. Denzel Ingram is locked and loaded for three. Again, a tell of two halves here, isn't it? Absolutely. David Robinson, Texas sons a walk on. Reading wild. Duke. Craig Ponder, a good offensive game for the Seahawks. Buries that. Wilmington up by four. On the break. Seahawks running. Craig Ponder, no. Chris Flemings, yes. He had 18. Look at Brandon Ingram. Stops on a dime and knocks down the three just before halftime to cut it to a three-point game. Second half. Grayson Allen to Marshall Plumley, who had the game of his Duke career. Ingram showing off every bit of the skill set here. Nice move. Very Kevin Durant esque right there. Showed the outside touch, then he takes it in low, but you said it. Marshall Plumley, 21 points, right, in the second 23, half? 23. 23 for the game. That's Ponder. <laughs> Kept him within. They had a 14 0 run, Duke did in the second half to pull away. Here's Plumley. 23 points or 12 more than he had scored in his entire NCAA tournament career before today. Well, he was really good, but I tell you what, boy, they, they really attacked him. Got to the free throw line 43 times in a game, and that's just tough to beat right there. I tell you, I thought Wilmington played well. The pay, they got the pace in the first half, but they, had, they, they couldn't get the pace going in that second half. And this is the real story, Seth. The free throw line where Duke dominated. They took 43 free throws in this game. Grayson Allen hit 15, one more than the entire Seahawks team. Totally by design, outscored him by 17 points from the line. You're not going to be able to overcome that. Of course, that was by design. Uh, UNC Wilmington second to last in the country over the course of the season in terms of fouls committed per possession. And uh, Marshall Plumley, obviously the story of the game. How about the fact that Marshall Plumley during the ACC tournament uh, Broke his nose. That's right. And for one game, wore a mask. So he's basically playing with a broken nose, but not playing with a mask. He was unmasked and unleashed today <laughs> against the Seahawks. Those so go into the army. Design, or were they getting the calls? I, I was going to say, watch the, the, the interesting verbiage on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> if, if that's the way it happened to UNC Wilmington all season long, the refs just totally did it all season long. Well, Duke they gets the calls all season long. So Butler and Texas Tech, meanwhile, Kellen Dunham. Oh, I love Duke. He can shoot. He can really shoot the basketball. Really good player. Uh, Indianapolis kid. Stayed home to play. Uh, just had a great, great college career. Really playing well now. I thought he was a difference in his basketball game today. Butler led it by two at the half. That's Justin Gray knocking down the three. But more from Dunham. 
goes to his right, hangs, hits. He's been, he's been on a tear, coach. He's been shooting the ball really well later in the year. 55 for his last 101 threes coming in to this game since midway through the season when he was struggling. He was key today. Aaron Ross to Gray there. He had 10, and it's 46 all. Keelan Martin, scoring freshman for the Bulldogs. In transition for three, how about another? Took him a while to get going. Didn't even get his first field goal until midway through the second half. Gave Butler the room that it needed. And there's that man right there, Rosie Jones, with the finish. Got to love Roosevelt Jones. Four, eight, and six on the day. Nobody like him in the NCAA. I, I tell you what, watch out for Butler. They're kind of meant for this time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, really kind of got that team. Can really shoot. And that guy right there yep. can really play now, man. He, he Watch out for this team right here. Be interesting to see how they play the next round. Jimmy Chitwood. Kellen Dunham, look out. <laughs> hey, what, they, if they look get out. Virginia, that's a comfortable matchup for Butler. Absolutely. I'm telling you what, I think Butler doesn't mind a little physical no. contact. Yep. No question, no question. And no. I think they can space them out enough and uh, yeah. be a, could be a great game. But watch out for the Butler Bulldogs again getting to the Sweet 16. And it would be Virginia next, assuming the Cavaliers take care of business today. We've got the uh, Jayhawks of KU and Austin P coming up. I eat the same thing. You know, I was very superstitious about that. Make sure everything's in balance. It gets me ready to go battle. Kansas and Austin P coming up here next. The Jayhawks come in as the number one overall seed in this tournament. The Governors are a game over 500, but they've won six in a row. Time for Northwest Mutual planning for success. Head coach Bill Self from KU on facing the red hot Gubs. To beat Austin P because they are on a roll right now. Everybody in the tournament for the most part is on a roll, but but uh, the the thing you have to do is not let them be comfortable. You know these guys shot the heck out of it uh, in their conference tournament, probably as well as anybody in America shot it this past week. So we've got to be sure and get to their shooters and not let them get in any rhythm. That was Northwestern Mutual planning for success. KU comes in 30 and 4. They won the Big 12 for like 47 years in a row now. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the number. Maybe not. Close. 12. 12. 12. Close. Boy, Bill looked real relaxed. Might as well be. Right there. <laughs> Might as well <laughs> he be. He looked really relaxed. You were coaching like, his players, you look pretty relaxed. Oh, too. wow. I've never seen a coach look that relaxed before. Yeah, but if he matches up with UConn in the second round, ooh, that's a good little matchup. <laughs> Feels like 47, right? <laughs> it does. Yeah. This is Capital One Tournament Central. Team Stream is back Saturday, April 2nd. You can watch the Final Four on TBS. Then for the very first time on Monday, April the 4th, the national championship game comes to TBS as well. If you'd like to watch teams specific broadcasts for each of the final four participants, you can see those on TNT and True TV, which means you will hear slanted, a biased broadcast, you might think, on those networks. There's a guy with a Jayhawk on his face. And now he's on national television. And so it worked. <laughs> or backfired. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on your perspective, I suppose. Uh, the Jayhawks and the Governors just around the bend. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by 7-Eleven. Allstate. And by Jersey Mike's. 